today we'll be looking at the only two secret number stations belonging to the Mossad. E10 was one of the most unusual number stations as it sent letters read in NATO phonetics as opposed to strings of numbers. First heard in the late 1960s, it originally used live voice announcers before, like many other number stations did, switching to an automated female voice. E10 was believed to have emanated from deep within Israel's capital, Tel Aviv, and originated from the Mossad. The Tel Aviv location theory was due to strong signals received within the city. Mossad is the abbreviation for the Institute for Intelligence and Special Tasks. It was generally believed that the Mossad operated these clandestine stations, and they were often referred to in the community as Mossad transmissions. Transmitter sites included Israel and Israeli embassies and consulates due to the extremely high signal strengths reported by shortwave listeners close to these locations. They also reported high signal strengths in the vicinity of the Israeli UN mission as well as the Israeli embassy in Washington DC. The headquarters of the Mossad is located in Tel Aviv. From the top of an office building in the city, signals were allegedly sent out by microwave and UHF links to shortwave transmitters located throughout Israel, although this information has never been confirmed. Apparently, the tapes with the messages on were prepared and sent via telephone, UHF or microwave links to over 20 shortwave transmitting sites across the country. These transmitters varied in power from 10 to 20 kilowatts and used suppressed AM carriers or sideband depending on where the messages were destined for, and again, this is unconfirmed. During the 1990s, while staying at a hotel just outside Israel, a shortwave listener noted signals from the mysterious alphabet stations blasting through on his receiver. He noted up to 20 different transmissions during the hour. These transmissions consisted of long lists of letters, and these letters were spoken phonetically. The Mossad used a network of ordinary people of Jewish descent called Sayanim, meaning helpers who perform tasks for them. One ex-Mossad agent claims that there are thousands of Sayanim around the world, with 2,000 active in London alone, with another 4,000, quote, on the list, and that's today. Their job is to help the Mossad. A Sayan running a rental agency could help the Mossad rent a car without having to complete the usual documentation. An apartment manager Sayan could help find accommodation without raising suspicions. A bank Sayan could get you money in the middle of the night if you needed it, and a doctor Sayan could treat a bullet wound without reporting it to the police, and so on. As with most intelligence agencies, there are Mossad officers stationed in every Israeli embassy. Part of their job is to interact with the undercover Mossad agents who are not part of the embassy staff and therefore are more able to move around unnoticed. It would appear that the Mossad transmissions were meant for either the undercover agents or the Sayanim since the embassy staff would have access to more secure communications channels. There were many three-letter call signs for the E10 number station, sometimes with suffixes to determine the status of the message. One indicated the transmission was a test, and two indicated a message was to follow. On rare occasions, another number was sent, presumably indicating a higher priority message to follow, or something else. It was also not uncommon to hear the identifier sent without any number after it. In these cases, a message usually did follow. A female voice was used to repeat the three-letter phonetic phrase, or identifier, and this could go on for hours before a message was sent. There were three E10 variants depending on the activity of a certain station ID, high traffic, low traffic, and non-traffic. 
The high traffic station IDs were seen on the usual daily schedules, on the hour and on the half hour mark. Low traffic stations usually didn't send messages, most of the time following the non-traffic transmission format but following the schedule. And finally non-traffic stations have never sent any messages and were a rare occurrence, not following schedules. The same messages were transmitted at exactly the same time each day and could run for several days before they were changed. For the most part, E10 operated seven common stations, however there were more, each using a different three-letter identifier, and for much of the day, many were active simultaneously. Each of the stations used a different frequency range, implying different target areas depending on the time of day and propagation. The Mossad network used a wide range of frequencies for transmissions. Each frequency was usually used by only one station identifier, although some frequencies shared several. The Mossad stations were typically well run. Sometimes the transmitters would go on the air a few minutes early, typically just for a few seconds. Then they'd go off the air and back on again at the correct time for the message. This was likely testing to make sure everything was working as it should. Information received by the Enigma Group in 1993 from two independent sources suggested that some of these transmissions did originate from Israel. Enigma also received an anonymous letter from London which clearly stated that the transmissions from E10 were of Middle East origin, specifically Israel. Shortwave listeners took directional readings on higher frequency transmissions and reached the same conclusion. In November 2007, the station identifier Juliet Sierra Romeo ceased operations, and by July 2008, the station identifier Foxtrot Tango Juliet had also disappeared. From March 2010 to March 2011, only one of the five remaining stations was active during any given 30-minute transmission slot. E10 transmitted until mid-March 2011 and was never heard again. E10 had a sister station, E10A, a variant of E10 that sent alphanumeric strings rather than five-letter groups. The broadcast consisted of the usual three-letter identifier, followed by a string, repeated for several minutes. E10A operated on 15-minute past and 15-minute to 30-minute time slots, rather than on the hour and half past the hour like E10. Often mislabeled as the last transmission, a notable broadcast on the 15th of March 2006 is memorable for many shortwave listeners. E10A sent its only ever known clear text string, which read as follows. Taking the identifier and the letters out of the message reveals the word good night. Alpha, Gold, One, Oscar, Two, Oscar, Three, Delta, Four, November, Five, India, 
Speak. Go. Submit. Post in. Eight. Tango. 810A continued to broadcast on schedule for a few more weeks until it disappeared forever in May of 2006. Alpha, Bravo, end of message.